Welcome to Marketing Monday on Monday, July 25th. Uh, actually, on a Monday for once. Holy moly. We're going to kick things off with wins and fails. And I want to start off by giving a big, big, sad fail to the concept of lost friendship. There's someone uh, rich and famous who had that happen too. And it's sad because his friendship with Google CEO Sergey Brin, for some reason, has drifted apart. I don't know if it's just their busy lifestyles or the fact that Elon Musk had sex with his wife. <laughs> wow, he was simultaneously impregnating a Neuralink executive. He was also having sex with the wife of Google CEO Sergey Brin, who is now filing for divorce. Though there is plenty of evidence, both from the Wall Street Journal and other reputable sources that says not only did he do it, but that he publicly apologized to him on his hands and knees at a party. <laughs> begging him to take the friendship back. Uh, but it's de it's debated. It's debated whether or not, I mean, he's still, he's saying he didn't do it. He actually said not to do it in a very specific way. There's no way he could have done it because he hasn't even had sex in ages. Sigh. <laughs> and of course, love me some Musk. Danielle says, damn, not even on the vacation, sad face. And he hits her with a nope. <laughs> Probably a DM as well, if I had to guess. But there's actual business reasons to talk about Elon, not just his incredibly in the news week after week lately, sex life. Uh, and I have to give a win to the team over at Twitter because uh, as you guys know, there is a legal battle brewing between Twitter and Elon Musk. And uh, the big debate for the first phase of this battle was what time the, the, the court date would take place. Twitter wanted to happen as soon as possible. Because while they're in this ongoing legal battle, it is, you know, hurting their stock price. It's a it's a state of being in limbo and flux that is, is not good for the company. And Elon wants it to last as long as possible because if he can drag this, he can ensure that his financing, basically the banks that have agreed to pay for his debt to buy the company, will back out. And if they back out, he can't be forced to complete the deal. The court has responded with a basically a no-nonsense attitude. That she basically shut down Elon's lawyer's arguments and said, we're gonna have this trial in September. Uh, also, looking at her past judicial records, what she has uh, ruled on in the past, she has a rare precedent of forcing a owner to buy a company they had agreed to purchase. But uh, let's jump over to some other uh, fails, specifically a fail on all of the freeloaders and moochers out there. Freeloaders and moochers are finally getting the crackdown. Netflix has added an extra home fee and it will block your Netflix usage in other homes if you don't pay. This is rolling out now. It is in a ton of countries. Uh, I don't know if it's in America just yet, but it's in quite a few countries, and I believe it is rolling out to America very, very soon. It is a 2 to $3 per month charge that will show up if you are uh, watching in a different home. And if you, if you have a two-week trial period, after which it will just ban your account. <laughs> but password sharing has been so prevalent for so long. And again, just a few years ago, they tweeted, love is sharing a password. I mean, Netflix's strategy has changed dramatically. They used to not care. One of the big advantages that Netflix has had for a long time was that their access to the customer was so widespread that it was like the only place you could get a real hit. Cracking down could change that. It's gonna be interesting how that plays out. Let's jump into something else. The problem is, here's the problem. The problem is that my wins and fails lately have reflected, you know, we talk about marketing and business. And in all of 2021, I would say things like, uh-oh, this shit's about to crash. And everyone would be like, ha, 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 yeah, but those to the moon. <laughs> you know, and nobody, everyone like enjoyed them, but because they hadn't happened yet, everyone was still in a good mood. But in the past couple of months, I've noticed that even though I'm doing the same type of updates, I'm getting more comments like, hey man, this is really depressing. <laughs> and it's like, I don't think they've gotten extra dark. I think that the world is just crashing now economically. We're just having a lot more economic troubles. Inflation's at all time highs and people are feeling it in their uh, consumer goods purchases and at the pump and it no longer feels as funny. So what I was thinking was, okay, hey, here's a win. Look at this cute puppy. Oh my God, a big win to all of us for seeing this cute little guy. And he wants to let you know that American consumers have never felt this financially insecure. This trend is getting very bad, but he's cute. <laughs> but unfortunately, 
the rising cost of all goods is causing more people to feel financially insecure than ever before. But he's cute. <laughs> Look how cute he is. Oh, little guy. Look at him. <laughs> uh, let's give a win. Uh, Twitch streamers. You know what? Because everyone else is feeling the sting, but guess who's not feeling the sting? Twitch streamers. Not YouTube streamers, Twitch streamers. You know why? Because we work for the number one company. Amazon is the number one company to work for in 2022, according to LinkedIn. By what metric? Fun. <laughs> By what metric? Success. Uh, I have no idea how this was measured. It feels, it feels like it either heavily discounts <laughs> the many negative stories I've heard about working at Amazon. The fact that I quit working from Amazon for my own uniquely negative experiences. I have no idea. Let's see if there's any answers in the comments. Results may be paid for. <laughs> uh, Mark Zuckerberg is freaking out. In fact, I think I could segue that pretty well, <laughs> maybe into a win slash fail. Uh, so if you guys remember a few years ago when Kylie Jenner, I know you guys all follow her religiously, tweeted that she doesn't use Snapchat anymore. Snapchat is dead. And the company lost like $7 billion of market cap overnight. Well, I have some bad news for Mark Zuckerberg. Make Instagram Instagram again. Stop trying to be TikTok. I just want to see cute photos of my friends. Sincerely, everyone came up on Kylie Jenner's Instagram page this morning. But uh, it is a larger trend that has... Let me get a nice picture of sad Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, this is a good photo for this. Uh, I'm going to have a big fail to Meta in general, who are going through some really tough times. They're reporting earnings soon. And it just feels like Meta is completely lost. Facing three different tornadoes hitting from all different directions. Number one, Apple and their new quote unquote privacy push, which essentially has been described as robbing the mob's bank. <laughs> so they basically cut heavily into Facebook's profits and ability to track and uh, ad target their users. That's number one. Uh, number two is that uh, the metaverse <laughs> is kind of not happening as quick as we hoped in 2021 <laughs> and then the third big problem is TikTok, and this is the biggest problem of all because it's cutting into their current profits we will see what's happening over at meta but it's a big l from where i'm standing uh but we can follow that up with an easy win listen i know you guys don't have the greatest opinion of martin shkreli who started a ponzi scheme and jacked up the price of drugs but guess what baby he's out of prison and he's back with a brand new Web3 drug discovery platform. He's on the straight and narrow. There is no way that is a Ponzi scheme. It's it's positive. We got we have positive stories on here too. Martin Shkreli turned a new leaf. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is looking good for though. The sharp eyes of readers out there. This is a big win. Are any of you readers? I assume there's maybe one of you among the 5,000. I'm sure <laughs> one of you has read a book sometime in your life. Guess what? There is a new opportunity for you. Because I think what we've all asked is, can we financialize the act of reading books? The answer is yes. What if you could own a stake in Harry Potter? What if a book series functioned like a publicly traded company where individuals could buy stock in it? <laughs> and as the franchise grows, these stocks become more valuable. Suddenly a trip to Barnes and Noble becomes an investment opportunity. <laughs> Early readers could spot the next big thing and make a $100 contribution that becomes $10,000 or even $100,000 if the book's popularity grows. Yes! This is what I want. Every single possible hobby should be financialized. This is what I've been hoping for. <laughs> Every single thing I do should be turned <laughs> into a way for me to sort of commodify, invest, <laughs> and turn it into profit. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Anyway, it's cool. <laughs> Let's check it out. <laughs> Uh, no, let's see. That's a, that's actually, that's not a win. Let me get you an actual win here. Okay, this one's about protests all over Ecuador because of a spike in prices for food and fuel. That sounds depressing. I'm going to skip it. So, you know, uh, because inflation has been rising, do bear with me, because inflation has been rising, bear with me, certain things obviously have been more expensive and some more expensive than others. And one thing that has been particularly more expensive and we no longer have to worry about our family dragging us to is boring Major League Baseball games. It's now much less likely that your dad or uncle are going to drag your whole family to a boring baseball game because it's now over $200 for a family of four. It's getting too expensive.
That's got, that's 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 pretty much a win. <laughs> you gotta give me that one. Uh, and for a fail, because I I'm, now I'm doing a fail. One for you, one for me. Okay. Here's the fail. Let me get kind of serious for a moment. Uh, this is the last like depressing one. No matter what the economic report comes out on Thursday, the fact is, is that since things have gotten more expensive, there is a lot of evidence people have been taking on debt to pay for their regular expenses. So even though we haven't seen a slowdown in spending as much as you'd expect, we have seen a rise in credit card debt. And what we're starting to see, if you keep a real close eye on the ball, is some signals that that's not gonna last too much longer. So the AT&T CEO dropped this in a earnings report and it was kind of buried, but he basically said that around six weeks ago, they started to see an uptick in overdue bills. And when you start to see that, that is a very dangerous sign. This is an interesting uh, thing to keep an eye on and it's it's not a win by any respect of the imagination, but it's good to be prepared and it's good to not be too exuberant so I only say this to keep people informed and I'm not trying to be depressing. And again, I'm not trying to be a doomer. And I do think I'll, I'll, I'll do a better search, but there, there are positive things. <laughs> I just want people to be informed on things that I think people don't talk about enough. <laughs> okay, and I'm sorry. Now, now, hey, I'm done with that. Now, okay, funny one, <laughs> a win to my man, Magnus Carlson. Okay, if you guys don't know, Magnus Carlson basically dropped out of the World Chess Championship, basically saying he no longer wants to compete. And the funny part, the reason it's a win is because he got out just in time before the robots. <laughs> because as of yesterday, a chess robot broke a seven-year-old boy's finger. This happened at the Moscow Chess Open. And officials say the boy made a move during the robot's turn, and that caused the robot to grab his index finger and squeeze it. You can imagine Holy how scary this fuck. though, uh, how scary this was though. He was Holy able to continue fuck. to compete. It's not a joke. Yeah, they grabbed his finger and broke it. So, you know, the win is that Magnus Carlsen got out and I'm happy because I don't want to see the robots come for him. Uh, all right, as always, we close win and fails with an update on China. What's up Beijing? With what's up Beijing? What's going on in China? What? And the main piece of news that I'd like to update you on is that uh, it's becoming more and more apparent that uh, China is angling towards possibly doing something related to Taiwan, basically military action related to Taiwan within the next year and a half. Uh, the United States is trying to bring up Taiwan's profile and legitimacy with other governments and nations, uh, while China is trying to isolate them and downplay it in preparation for a possible military action. Uh, we, we, there's no hard data here. I'm just basing on things that is being read. But it's um, this is the clearest flashpoint between the two big military powers uh, of our time. So hopefully all all goes well and nothing happens. And it, uh, I have no more information than that. I'm, I've been following it myself. I really like to know how it's going to play out, and I hope it plays out well. And with that, I now officially end the wins and fails. What an interesting uh, turn of events. We went from giving away 100 bucks to talking about <laughs> global geopolitics. <laughs>